Good evening, I'm Sean Preville. And I'm Jessica Curtis, and you're watching Mediaplex Headline Challenge. The headline challenge pits the first-year journalism students against the second-year graduating class in a battle of news trivia. We have three question rounds, local, national, and international. Before we begin, however, let's check in with our game host, Kyle Simpkins. How are you feeling about this headline challenge, Kyle? Sean, I am extremely excited and a little bit nervous and a little bit terrified standing here in between the two teams. To my right, I have the first years in blue. To my left, the second year is in red. This is the third annual Headline Challenge. The prize, the coveted Headline Challenge Cup. The second years have taken both previous uh, Headline Challenges. So the first years, they're hungry. The second years, I think they're a little nervous. We'll see what happens. Before we introduce who's on the teams, I'm gonna throw it back to you guys so you guys can give me your predictions. Guys. Now, I personally know that the first year team is going to be bringing home the cup this year. Our first year team consists of, from Harrow, Ontario, Shelby Hernandez. And from Windsor, Ontario, Sean Frame and Aaron Sanders. Well, I don't know about that, Jess. The second year team is looking pretty tough. Our second year team consists of Mitch Went of Tecumseh, Sarah Ryrie from LaSalle, and Madison Dugan from right here in Windsor. Well, it's anyone's game right now. Let's head over to Kyle for round one. Thanks, Jess. Like she just said, this is round one. It's the local round. It's all about Windsor and surrounding areas. I'm going to ask my first two contestants to join me at the competition table, I guess. We got Aaron Sanders. We got Mitch Went. Guys, here's the rules. One hand on the table, one hand behind your back. Hand on the table will be the buzzer hand. When I hear this sound from one of the two buzzers, that means you guys are willing to answer. If you do not get it correct, the other person will get the chance to answer the question. No correct answers, we move along, no points are awarded. You guys ready? Yep. All right, let's do it. Let's start the headline challenge. Question number one in the local round. Which University of Windsor graduate is now the CEO of Chrysler? Three, two, one. No clue. No clue. All right, we're gonna move along. It's Sergio Mercioni. Now, now, second question. What Ontario city, along with Windsor, has a major Chrysler assembly plant? It's in the GTA. Toronto? False. <laughs> Mississauga? False. All right, it's a tight one. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Which next generation Chrysler vehicle will be built in the new Windsor, well, the current Windsor plant? It's been around since 1984. Minivan? Minivan! We got our first point for the second years. <laughs> Woo! Which actor comedian was recently arrested at Caesars Windsor? Aaron. George Lopez. George Lopez is correct. Woo! <laughs> what was the reason for his arrest? He was drunk. We take that? Okay. All right, beauty. Second year is up two to one. Yeah. Well, government question. When Mayor Eddie Francis vacates his mayor chair in December, he plans to take the position of executive vice president of what company? Mitch. WFCU? Correct. Good job. We're moving along. First couple, you know, now we're ready. The University of Windsor Student Association passed a controversial referendum boycotting companies from which country? Middle East. Mm. Israel was the answer. What human body part was found in a Windsor Railway in March? Aaron. That was a severed hand. That was a severed hand. That's correct. 
Which Canadian Olympic medalist for both the Summer and Winter Olympics rode into town in March? Clara Hughes. Clara Hughes is correct. <laughs> Halfway through the first round, guys, how are you feeling? Great. Be good. Tie score, 3-3. Three, three. Which major Leamington factory shut down? Mitch. Heinz. Heinz is correct. Second year's lead, four to three. Which Quebec ultra-Orthodox Jewish community fled to Chatham to avoid allegations of abuse and neglect? Mitch. Lev Taylor. Accept that? Um. Nope. Lev Tahor. Close. Uh. Oh, that's so close. Ah. Eh. Which local ice rink installed synthetic ice in January only to remove it before it opened to the public? This was right downtown. Charles Clark Square was the correct answer. It was horrible. Which LaSalle native won the Super Bowl? Mitch. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson is correct. Second years have a five to three lead. Which high school did he attend? Hmm. Herman. Herman is false. Mitch? Uh, sandwich. Sandwich was close, but not right. Mm -hmm. Villanova. Which Windsor native won a gold medal at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi on the Canadian women's hockey team? Tough one. Megan Augusta. Three time. Gold medal. Four? Three. Who filled Percy Hatfield's vacated Ward 7 seat in December? Mitch. Eric Kuzimak. Eh, we'll accept that. It's a tough last name. There's like 24 letters in it. <laughs> <laughs> a winning Lotto Max ticket was sold in Windsor in March. How much was the ticket worth? Mitch. A million? One million is correct. A million dollar question. <laughs> million dollar question. Three questions to go in the local round. Which Canadian company bought a portion of the factory, saving hundreds of Leamington jobs? It's a tough one. It was the Highbury Canco Corporation. Stacy would have got that one. Leamington native. A Windsor teen who allegedly made threats via Twitter caused a temporary lockdown of which high school in February? Riverside? Riverside is correct, Mitch. The second years have a commanding eight to three lead. Last question in the local round. In February, the city of Windsor stockpiled thousands of tons of salt in anticipation of a heavy snowfall. At what location was this store? Mitch. Windsor Arena. Windsor Arena is correct. That concludes the first round. My scorekeeper, Stacy Janzer, tells me that the score is currently 9-3. to three. I see that Sean has a guest over there. Sean, what's going on? Well, Kyle, we have none other than Veronique Mandel, the head of the Journalism, Public Relations, and Media Convergence program right here at the Mediaplex. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Sean. So, Veronique, what interesting things are going on here at the Mediaplex? I think one of the uh, most interesting things that we've done, and there are very few schools, journalism schools in the country, where you have we go to to air live as we're doing tonight. But every day we go to we go to air every day actually uh, live at one. And today we had our one hundredth show. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> So it's very exciting. Definitely. Now, what advice would you give to anyone who's perhaps interested in uh, applying to St. Clair and applying to a program here at the Mediaplex? I think if they're having any hesitation at all, one of the things that we would like them to do is to come in and visit us. Come in and see the newsroom, see the shows go to air, watch how the students are producing these shows and 
doing their interviews, all these things that will help any prospective student when they go out to be really marketable. And I think that's what our program is so geared for, is making sure that these young journalists go out into the newsrooms and they're, you know, really set to go to work. And who are you rooting for? Oh my goodness, they'd both kill me if I told you. Uh, but um, hey, best team win. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Veronique, for joining us. You're welcome. And back to you, Kyle, for the second round. Thank you, Sean. After a slow start in the first round, we're going to move on to round two, which is the national round. It's all about the great white north, all about our great country of Canada. So I'm going to need Sarah Ryrie to come join me and Sean Frame from the first years. Let's do this. How are you guys feeling after that first round? Pretty good? Pretty good, uh... Glad Mitch grabbed us nine points. We might need those. There we go. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good, pretty confident. We're good. gonna take it back. Confidence is key. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do this. We know the rules? Yep. Looks like you guys are ready. Who is the leader of the federal opposition? It's a tough one. No idea. Thomas Mulclair is the correct answer. <laughs> what political party does he represent? Uh, that would be the New Democratic Party. That is correct. First years get the first point of the second round. Who is the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada? Sean. Uh, that would be Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau is correct. He is the son of which former Prime Minister of Canada? Sean. That would be Pierre Trudeau. That is correct. <laughs> Somebody hit the books, huh? All right. Who is the premier of our great province of Ontario? Sarah. Premier Wynn. Correct. <laughs> Kathleen. Just trying to be respectable. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Which former CBC broadcaster and Windsor City Council member represents Windsor Tecumseh? in the provincial legislature. John. Jeff Watson. False. Jeff Watson is the MP of Essex for the Conservative government. Percy Hatfield is the correct answer. Which country did the Canadian men's Olympic hockey team defeat in Sochi for the gold? Was it Switzerland? No, close. Uh, <laughs> it starts with an F, I believe. I know we schooled the USA. I think that, that should true, count partially. That is true, but you partially. were wrong. It is Sweden. It does not start with an F. <laughs> In which Canadian city will the Pan American Games be held this summer? Which Canadian city? Ottawa? False. I'm just going to take a stab in Montreal. False. It was Toronto. No one likes Toronto. Which is the, who is the mayor of Toronto? Sean. Rob Ford. Rob Ford is correct. It's a tough one. Who is the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs? I know it's what, oh. Okay, I know it's a man. That's true, it is. <laughs> it is. That is true. Total Sarah. guesstimate, but Matt Sundin? False. <laughs> Previous captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I've got nothing. Dion Phaneuf. Oh, it yeah. could be a female name. Yeah, Phaneuf. Dion Warwick. Who was the captain of the Canadian women's hockey team in Sochi? <laughs> I'll let you take this one, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to guess Megan Augusta. False. Yeah. She will probably be the captain of the next Olympic hockey team. Just Caroline Olette. Olette. Who is the Conservative Member of Parliament for Essex? You guys are really going to kick yourself. Jeff Watson. Oh. Joe Comartin is Member of Parliament for Windsor-Essex. What role was he elected to in Parliament? S 
Minister of Finance? False. No. Take a stab. Minister of Transportation. Deputy Speaker. All right, six to go. Who is the Member of Parliament for Windsor West? Uh, Brian Massey. Brian Massey is correct. The first years are catching up, eight to ten. What party does he represent? John. Uh, liberals. Nope. Um, I don't know. The NDP. It's close. You know, this is five. Who was recently appointed Canada's new finance minister? Joe Oliver was the correct answer to that one. Who was the previous finance minister? Sean. Uh, Jim Flaherty. Jim Flaherty was correct. Is correct. Was and is. The first years have pulled within a point. Nine, ten to nine for the second years. Which province's curling team won the 2014 Tim Hortons Briar? Sarah looks like she was. Sarah? Alberta? Alberta's correct. <gasps> <laughs> With a two-point lead, we have three questions left in the second round. What is the capital city of British Columbia? Stacy? Sarah? Vancouver. False. British Columbia? Is the name of the province. <laughs> <sighs> I was going to guess Vancouver too, but... <laughs> um, Edmonton? No. False. Victoria. <laughs> what is the capital city of Ontario? Sean. Toronto. Toronto is correct. I lied. We have two questions left. Who is the main anchor on CBC's The National? Judges go to Sean. I'm, just, I'm drawing a blank now. Sarah? David Common? False. Peter Mansbridge is the correct answer. Loretta Saunders, who went missing and was found dead in February, lived in which Canadian city? Sarah? Nova Scotia? In Halifax? <laughs> we'll accept that. All right, the city was in the correct province. That's it for the national round. I see that Jessica. Yeah, yeah, that's a good job. First years were down by six at the beginning of, the, of that round. Second years are up by two. 12 to 10 is the current score. I see that Jessica Curtis has, another, has a guest over there. Jessica. Thanks, Kyle. I'm here with Mary Helen Spadafora, the vice president of Rose City Gymnastics. So tell us about the um, provincial championships being held this weekend. Well, this weekend, there's going to be uh, 1,500 athletes, judges, and coaches coming to Windsor to compete in the Provincial Ontario Championships for gymnastics. Awesome. So how many people can we expect this weekend? We can expect about 5,000 people coming to Windsor. Um, we have about 400 uh, hotel rooms booked and lots of um, tourist wizard is on board and lots of restaurants and uh, different attractions are on board for us. What kind of attractions are on board? Well, uh, the City of Windsor provided us with Adventure Bay tickets for all athletes that are coming in, uh, two for one tickets. So we're really excited to be able to give back to the city and to offer them, um, you know, some tourists, the staycation that uh, Windsor's promoting right now. That sounds awesome. So what else can we expect to see this weekend? Well, we can expect to see the best of the best of Ontario for gymnastics. We have all athletes ages 8 to 18, and these kids go on to become national gymnasts and potentially Olympic gymnasts. And when is the championship this weekend? The championships begin on Thursday, uh, Thursday morning, I believe, at 10, and they last from Sunday till 9 p.m. Awesome. So before we head back to Kyle, let's take a look at our regular, li regular live news show, Mediaplex News Now. If you like what you see here, then you'll love our great Mediaplex News lineup. Watching Mediaplex News Now. 
Yeah. Tune in Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. for MediaPlex Live at 1, and also Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. for MediaPlex News Now. It's content produced by MediaPlex students for our In the Know audience. The MediaPlex, bringing you news perspectives from the next generation of journalists. Welcome back. Let's get started with our third and final round. This is the international round. It's about the globe. Madison Dugan, you're up. Shelby Hernandez, join us. <laughs> Woo! Oh, How are you guys feeling? I'm it's nervous. crazy nervous. It's a tight game. Score it's tight. is pretty close. That's why I'm so nervous. Alrighty, let's get right into it. <laughs> the international, third round. The law on gay marriage in England and Wales lifted recently under which prime minister? Mm, I don't know. I David know. Cameron was the correct answer. I knew the two places. Crimea has been claimed by what country? The biggest one on the planet. Russia? Correct! No. <laughs> one point game. Who is the president of Russia? Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is correct. We have a tie game. Oh my god. In the okay. third round. I gotta not look at Barack that. Barack Obama is the president of the United States. What political party does he belong to? Oh my god. There's only two over there. <laughs> Dose. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The Democratic Party. He is a liberal. Okay. A helicopter crashed off the top of a news building recently in which American city? Oh my god, I just read this today. <laughs> and I don't remember. Seattle is the correct answer. With a tie game, 12-12 in the third round. What well-known actor was recently found dead in his New York apartment with a needle in his arm? He's an Oscar winner. I know it too. I don't know. Philip Seymour Hoffman was the correct answer. Oh. Fashion designer Loren Scott was found dead last month. It's pretty depressing questions. <laughs> Off a supposed suicide, who was her British rock star boyfriend? Uh, He's got good moves. Uh, Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger's correct. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Rob Ford recently appeared on what American television show? Madison. Was it TMZ? False. Well, I'm sure he was on there, but <laughs> false. Um, I don't know. I don't think we can go back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> what film won Best Picture at this year's Oscars? Oh. I A dozen... 12 Years a Slave. 12 Years a Slave. With that, the first years take a two-point lead. What long-running TV comedy had its final episode last night? How I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother is correct. Because I love that show. <laughs> Guys, this is our final question. And with the first years up three, I think we have a new champion. What comic book company is introducing a teenage Cree superhero this month? There's only two. Companies <laughs> I don't that know. make comic books. Madison, your turn. <laughs> it's something comics. It's DC Comics, but <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. The first that. years win the third annual headline <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Woo! Well, I'm going to throw it over to Sean for our third and final interview. Well, Kyle, I have to say the second years put up a great run. Now, we're here with Shelley uh, Divnick uh, Haggart. Thank you very much. I always have trouble with that. Okay. Now, we're here, uh, you're a professor here at the MediaPlex. Why do you think uh, student-run productions like this are so important? Uh, besides reminding them that they need to follow current events a little more closely, they uh, get the hands-on experience. It's not theory. They've now had the experience of going live to air, and that is invaluable in the field that they're entering. Now. You are editor of The Hub. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? 
The Hub is a digital magazine. That's facebook.com slash the Hub Windsor Essex. We just launched our ninth issue this afternoon, and we connect the resources and businesses and interesting things happening in our community with one another. Okay, and um, you've had a number of uh, students from the journalism program take part in the Hub already. Um, how can students get involved? Well, we have had students from this program numerous times. They are the best equipped. They do video, they do writing, they do audio, they know how to put it all together. Anyone that's looking for an opportunity with the Hub just needs to be doing really well right here and we'll notice. Well, it sounds like a great opportunity and uh, how did you enjoy the night? It was an interesting evening and I'm always glad to be here to watch what's going on in the newsroom and the projects that the students are putting together. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Shelley. And uh, let's head back over to Kyle for the Headline Challenge Cup presentation. Thank you, Sean. I'm going to bring in the head of the Mediaplex, Veronique Mandel, to present the Headline Challenge Cup to the first years for the first time. Congratulations. You can hold it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, and to you. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Good job. So, Veronique, what were your thoughts of this year's Headline Challenge? I thought this, this was probably one of the, uh, the most challenging years and the closest. So, and I thought they were sort of pretty evenly matched and um, I was terrified that they wouldn't get all the answers and they really, I thought, did us proud. What does something like this, why is this so important for a journalism program at a college? Well, you know, the media and journalism is not all about just the news and these kinds of performances and the challenges when students have to be in a competition like this I think it's equally important because not everyone wants to go out and become a reporter and sometimes they can go out and be game show hosts uh, and um, editors and all kinds of um, sort of opportunities are out there. And I think this just sort of adds another skill. All right, well, let's have a little conversation with the winners over here. <laughs> Aaron Sanders, yeah, let's clap for him, why not? I'm low on court over here, Aaron, so join me a little bit closer. After the first round, it was uh, the second years were uh, sort of running away with it. What'd you feel like after the first round? Well, first of all, I had to keep high confidence for my team. I mean, this is a bright bunch of people over here. Congratulations to the second year for a job well done. But oh, the nice. first years, you know, we did it. We, you know, kicked it in gear, and you know, we came up with the victory. Right, bright bunch of people, and um, glad we got the W. Shelby, all those nerves uh, at the beginning uh, warranted, or how do you feel right now? Pretty awesome. We're gonna have cake, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, let's bring in the cake. So that's cake. <laughs> Now From the sprinkles. <laughs> yes, the the, uh, the little fella is kind of falling off here, but um, we had an accident. I'm sure uh, jealous. <laughs> <and> yeah. <laughs> Alice Hewitt, who is our producer of uh, Headline Challenge, her sister made this fabulous Mediaplex wow. Headline Challenge cake cake for us. So you know what we're yeah. all doing after. Yeah. <laughs> sprinkles Cake Company. All right, the Mediaplex students would like to extend their thanks to the director of the show, Dave Harrison, also Larry Forsythe, Rick Dawes, especially for, uh, and all the cast and crew here. Uh, I guess we're going to throw it back over to Sean and Jessica. Guys? Thanks for joining us, everybody, and um, that's it for the show. Uh, I'm Sean Preville. This has been Jessica Curtis, and thank you to all the people who participated, and thanks for tuning in to the Mediaplex Headline Challenge.